This is a place where evil happened. Where Hitler's master plan of extermination was played out in the most horrific way. Around one and a half million people died here in Auschwitz. Shot, beaten, burned, gassed and starved to death. Others tortured and butchered. One million of those killed were Jewish. I owe my memory to those that didn't live to give their memory. I, I made a holy promise to those that asked for it. And mo most of them did. Most of them that could master the strength, their dying words were Kaddish, memorial prayer, and tell the world so that this would never happen again. Eva Slonim was only 13 when she and her 10-year-old sister Marta were herded onto the now infamous cattle trains headed for the Nazi concentration camp at Auschwitz. They were alone and terrified. We hoped, we hoped that the railway lines would be to Auschwitz would be bombed, but it didn't happen. We felt very, very disappointed, abandoned. Help didn't come until the Russian army liberated Auschwitz in February 1945, ending five years of one of the most chilling and brutal chapters in history. Now, 60 years on, the two sisters are returning together to the place where the unimaginable happened. Everything was fast, so you couldn't even collect your thoughts. We were pushed into another room where we were shaved, our hair, our body, body hair. And then I felt as though I was shaved of my body and soul. And whilst, when we entered the camp, when we marched into the camp, the, the road was flanked by skeletons, by living skeletons that didn't look normal, they didn't look human. All you could perceive was their huge eyes, but nothing else. And I then prayed to God not to turn me into one of them. And yet, when we walked out of that room, shaven and naked, I felt that now we've been turned into one of them. But there were worse horrors to come for Eva and Marta Weiss, who were selected by the notorious Dr. Josef Mengele for his twins program, even though they were three years apart in age. That selection meant they didn't suffer the same fate as their six-year-old sister Judith, who'd already perished at the camp. The camp doctor had other plans for them. And then Dr. Mengele put it, this huge needle into me. I was held down and he took one bottle after another and I counted them. Large bottles, four bottles. I thought, how many more have I got left? And this is it. But while the physical scars of Dr. Mengele's grotesque experimentation have healed over the years, the horrific memories persist. This woman was giving birth. Only one baby was born. She left the baby and she ran for her life. She ran, she ran. And Dr. Mengele came in. He was very in a very bad mood. He was furious. He took the baby. Shall I tell you what he did? He stood on the baby tore it in two, threw the baby, threw, threw it away. More than 200,000 children died at Auschwitz, newborn babies were drowned, little children carved up in evil experiments. And I pushed the door open and I saw the children that were missing. I saw the bodies of the children that were missing, that had left our barracks. and and parts of their bodies next to them and I saw ears and lungs and then there was one boy that was with me on the transport in the same wagon and I saw him sitting up with his arm next to him I cut off and sitting there and and I thought I realized then they're doing terrible things to children. Eva and Marta, children themselves at the time, have now been immortalized in the annals of the camp history photographed here by the Red Army some time after liberation. This week, they returned to Auschwitz, now an exhibit in the museum that was once their nightmare. 
and I really feel uncomfortable and a little angry that, they've called, that they're calling this place a museum. I feel as though it's something that is in a book and not real. I can't believe that it actually happened. The, the whole scenery has been re recreated just as I remember it on the 27th of January, 1945. On that day, Eva watched as the Russian soldiers drove out the Nazi oppressors. Suddenly, we were told that we were free. They lined up the Germans on the mountain of snow. And they told us we can do what we liked with them. And they were begging for, their, for our mercy. Those heroes that had no pity for us children, who were begging for their lives. Nobody touched them, none of us. And then we were free. As the world came together to remember them and the atrocities committed here, survivors like Eva Slonim are still trying to make sense of the terror they lived through. I feel scared and upset and I can't come to terms with it 60 years later. I still ask myself why, why and why. Political leaders at the 60th anniversary memorial made big promises. The same promises they've been making since the true scale of Hitler's atrocities was first uncovered after the war. Never again, they pledged. The way forward is through peace, not hate. Tolerance, not prejudice. For Eva, that's a truth deeply ingrained in her soul. I have hope, yes, I have faith in humanity, yes.